if secession doesn't happen, yeah, you said that Donald Trump was the dam, not the river. Yeah. That, fe- that, that sounds like Walt Whitman or something. You should, it's poetry, okay? okay. Are uh, you flirting with me? <laughs> I don't, I, uh, we, you, you know us, we don't, we don't flirt. We just <laughs> go to town. Cl- club <laughs> and drag you we, to the It's just the hammer, the cave. we hammer and stickle. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to know about the sickle. It's not good cop, bad cop, it's. Bad cop, worse cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think 2024 looks like? Uh, in terms of the candidates. And it's going to be Kamala Harris as the Democratic candidate. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Ted Cruz versus Mike Pence because they're both very good at debate. Um, that would be interesting to see how they differentiate themselves. But honestly, I don't, I mean, things are going to get really ugly really soon. What about Donald Trump coming back? He's not going to do it. Um, so things, in my opinion, I think things are going to be really, really crazy in 2021. And talk uh, talking about the dam being gone, like twenty twenty one. So this year co- coming up, oh yeah, it's going to be complete. Uh, it's going to be complete mayhem. What do you think, uh, like prediction wise? And this is empirical. What do you think Donald Trump's Twitter feed looks like in twenty twenty one? Like if we're at the end of twenty twenty one, we'll look back and see like what was the you know Obama Gate exclamation points or we won. Uh, you know. He is going to be for the first time in history holding the Republican party accountable to the, the base. We've never had that happen before. I, uh, I think he's going to be holding their feet to the fire, uh, radicalizing them. Uh, and given that they have the Senate where it's gonna be 50-50, the Democrats have a three seat majority in the house. This is not a governing coalition for either. Um, it's going to be complete mayhem. What does that actually look like? So, like, w- what are the key values you think that he's he's going to try to push? Um, I think it's just going to be very contrarian. It's he's going to be holding them accountable in terms of budgeting, even though he never did that as president. Right. Uh, I think in terms of some kind of nominations. Here's the thing: this is the first time since um, uh, like Nixon. Uh, 50 years, and things weren't as politicized then, where an incoming president doesn't have control of the Senate. The Senate has the vote over cabinet positions. I do not see a possibility of them not trying to pick a fight on one or two of these nominations. And that's going to, and especially as revenge for Kavanaugh, this is going to get very bloody very quickly. And I think Mitch McConnell, there's a sadistic side to him. He revels in being the brakes on the car. Uh, and I think the base, it's just going to be throwing just, they're going to want some bone. It's like, oh yeah, we we eliminated this one person. So that's going to get really ugly really quickly. You see it being quite divisive, like oh, yeah. the division increasing, not stabilizing or decreasing. I, I, and I'll be doing my part. I know you'll be doing my part, but I'm trying to do my part and like trying to be, like to me, the division is uh, shouting over uh, people like Elon Musk uh, people who are actually building stuff and like accomplishing things in this world in terms of like- Elon said he took the red pill. No, see, you're talking about the play. I'm talking about, forget Elon, uh, SpaceX and Tesla, and uh, actually the good sides of like some of the things that Google is doing, uh, like actually building things like making the world's information searchable, all that kind of stuff. Sure. Like all the stuff, you know, the making actually the world a better uh, place there's a bunch of technologies that are increasing our quality of life, all sure. this, all that kind of stuff. I feel like they get like not much credit or in our public discourse because of the division. The division is just like, like peop- it's clouding our ability to concentrate on what's awesome about this world. Well, you know what would eliminate the division, right? Secession. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't, I, it's hard for me to disagree it's it's hard for me to disagree, because but at the same time, secession. Um, I'm I'm a romantic at heart, and you to me, divorce a, breaks my heart. Cool, but do you want to live in a country? <laughs> cool story, bro. Yeah, but do you want to live in a country where Joe Rogan is regarded as an example of someone who's spreading white supremacy? I don't. Well, but see, I feel like that's not the country we live in. That's just uh, the New York Times did it. The cathedral does it on a regular basis. Well, the cathedral is, okay. 
the the ca cathedral, I guess you can maybe define the cathedral, but it's it's like the centralized institutions that have like a story that they're trying to sell and so yeah, on. Yeah, this is Moldbuck's concept, but yeah, they basically are set the limits of permissible discourse and create a narrative for the population to follow. But to me, that's a minority of people. Yeah, it's minority just, is always controlling everything in any country. The vast majority of the masses have no thought. Yeah, but minorities can be overthrown. And the, sure, the, the, the circulation of the elites, yeah. The way the, pro no, 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 and that's what, well, the, what progress looks like is ridiculous people take power. Yes. And then uh, they get annoying and new ridiculous people that are a little bit better overthrow the previous No, I think people. progress happens despite the people who are in power, not because of them. Right. And so why is the secession? So is, is it always about overthrowing the powerful? Is that how progress happens? No, I think progress happens despite the powerful. The powerful are gonna do what's in their power to maintain their power and they're gonna fight innovation because it's a threat to their control. There's always gonna be the New York Times of the world, right? There's always gonna be those, those sure, people that have Sure, let them inherited. have their own country. So it's, it's two countries. One has Joe Rogan, the other one has the New York Times. Yeah, that's basically what's happening right now. It just geographically doesn't map out very well, but culturally, yes. But that's just cultural stuff. Like there's a layer of public discourse. Okay. I don't mean like that's what we're operating under now, but there's actual like progress being made, like roads being built, uh, hospitals being run, all those kinds of things, like the, sure. the, the different innovations. That seems like secession is counterproductive to that. Right, because one country would have all the roads and the other would have all the hospitals. That's, that's a great point. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not the point I'm trying to make. It's just like, <laughs> it just feels like the division that we're experiencing in the space of ideas could be constructive and productive for, for building better roads and better hospitals as opposed to like using that division to separate the countries. They're all gonna have to solve the same problems, it feels like. Like, sure, but they can solve them differently and compete that way. Mass is a great mass example. Mass. Yeah, we're we're seeing that right now. Different countries have different mass mandates and things like this. And uh, the co competition within the same structure, within the same founding documents and same institutions, is not effective. You think is as effective it, as separating? It is effective, but there is a certain point which I think we have long passed, where there is not a consensus, a governing consensus, ideologically or culturally. Yeah.